This video is about the single greatest discovery made in the last 200 years. It corroborates much of what we know about manifestation, self-actualization, and the law of attraction. But it comes from a rather unlikely source, the Bible. More specifically, the lost gospel of Thomas, which is said to contain the sayings of Jesus himself. This extra-canonical script was found near Nag Hammadi in Egypt in 1945 among a group of scrolls. It's possible the Gospel of Thomas was written as early as 60 AD or as late as 140 AD. Written in Coptic, a language spoken in Roman Egypt starting in the 3rd century, the script begins with these words. These are the hidden words that the living Jesus spoke, and Didymus Judas Thomas wrote them down. The text is different in both tone and structure from the New Testament and four canonical Gospels. It isn't a narrative account of Jesus, but a more personal view. These are sayings attributed to Jesus, exactly as he said them when he taught others about human emotion and how to lead a good life. The book even has some allusion to his death without going into detail about his crucifixion, resurrection, or judgment day. There are, however, stories of texts and scripts surviving even after being buried or hidden away. What is this secret knowledge that the ancient people could access and benefit from that remains locked to us? Perhaps the answer lies in how we've structured modern society. It's obvious that the way of Western life has impacted how we view religion. There was a time when emotions were part of our language and tradition, and it was clearly in our religious texts too. Something happened in the 4th century, around 325 AD, that caused our text to be changed, and we lost a significant amount of information. The Emperor Constantine and the early Christian church made the call on what parts could remain in the Bible and what must be taken out. We know now that at least 45 books were either taken away or heavily edited into what we know today as the Bible. And we know this because we found the missing information in a tomb in Egypt among 13 other leather scrolls. But why hide them? There are many theories. One of them states that the Gospel of Thomas was extra-canonical and therefore buried after a letter from Bishop Athanasius said only the canon Christian scriptures were to be followed. The other theory is that Constantine and his court removed sections they thought might be too complex and they were hoping the Bible would be understandable and more mainstream. Or it could be that the buried scrolls contained powerful, life-changing information that didn't fit the narrative Constantine wanted out there. The group of people that found the Gospel of Thomas and followed it was burned at the stake and called Gnostic, a term used to describe those in cults from early Christianity, believing in the mystical and spiritual. But these are now concepts the West is prepared to embrace. Now that we're more receptive to the ideas like the law of attraction, manifestation, souls, and spirituality, it's perhaps the right time to finally unearth the hidden sayings of Jesus, written by Didymus Judas Thomas. Whoever finds the interpretation of these sayings will not experience death. Jesus said, let him who seeks continue seeking until he finds. When he finds, he will become troubled. When he becomes troubled, he will be astonished and rule over all. The third verse is where things get interesting. Jesus said, if those who lead you say, see, the kingdom is in the sky, then the birds of the sky will precede you. If they say, see, it is in the sea, then the fish will precede you. Rather, the kingdom is inside of you, and it is outside of you. When you come to know yourself, then you will become known, and you realize that it is you who are the sons of the living Father. But if you will not know yourselves, you dwell in poverty, and it is you who are in poverty. The third verse departs from the narrative we have been given about Christianity in the Bible because it allows man to hold himself to a higher status. When we say status, we don't mean in society or financially. We mean his place with respect to the divine and the universe. Jesus himself said the kingdom is within you, not above or below. 
And if this sounds like Eastern philosophy, it's because it is. Many Eastern religions believe God resides within us, and to treat others poorly is to treat God poorly. They also believe that you already possess everything you could need in this lifetime, whether it's knowledge, people, or resources. The third verse in the Gospel of Thomas simply states that you already know, and it's not about learning, but remembering. When you're presented with two job opportunities, and you consult friends and family to ask which one is better, you already know which one you're going to choose. You're only looking for confirmation and validation from external factors. His disciples questioned him and said to him, Do you want us to fast? How shall we pray? Shall we give alms? What diet shall we observe? Jesus said, Do not tell lies, and do not do what you hate. For all things are playing in the sights of heaven, for nothing hidden will become manifest, and nothing covered will remain without being uncovered. Jesus makes it clear that fasting, praying, and charity work aren't enough to absolve you of wrongdoing. The cleansing must be internal. Do not tell lies or do what you hate. He tells you that you cannot keep secrets. You may fool others, but you cannot fool yourself or the kingdom within you. If you know your capacity for greatness or creativity, but stay stuck in a job that is slowly draining your love and excitement for life, you're betraying yourself. You have the capacity to vibrate at a higher frequency and attract the life you desire, but that won't happen through prayer or fasting. It will happen when you are honest. To that effect, His disciples said to him, When will the kingdom come? Jesus said, It will not come by waiting for it. It will not be a matter of saying, Here it is, or there it is. Rather, the kingdom of the Father is spread out upon the earth, and men do not see it. Once again, alluding to how the kingdom isn't above or below, but in the present moment. It tells us not to wait for good things to come to us, but recognize the good that already exists and be grateful for it. To use the good around us and make it better. Too often, we wait for things to get better before we take action. Waiting to lose weight before going on vacation. Waiting to have more money before starting your own YouTube channel. You are living your life on pause. The kingdom isn't coming. It's already here. So, how can we begin to implement these teachings in our lives? To unleash the force of the divine within ourselves, we first have to understand how it works, and then know the language the divine speaks. Knowledge of the language resides within us. Our culture and history from thousands of years ago. At this point, there is no boundary here between Christians, Buddhists, and Hindus. They all know there's a field of energy surrounding us, and in order to activate that, we have to believe our prayers have already been answered. The Gospel of Thomas, verse 106, states this, When you make the two one, you will become the sons of man. But when you say, Mountain, move away, it will move away. Saying that when you make thoughts and emotions one thing, you can move mountains. Marrying thought and emotion makes you a force of nature, and it gives you immeasurable power to manifest anything. This idea is so powerful and important that it was mentioned in a similar way three different times in the texts. Verse 48, for example, states, If two make peace with each other in this one house, they will say to the mountain, Move away, and it will move away. In this case, Jesus is speaking about the peace between you and the house or temple within you. This too is about thought and emotion and combining them to move mountains. Today, the Bible says, Ask and ye shall receive. It's surprising that they chose to keep that piece of advice, but it's also true that without context, it loses all power. We know now Jesus isn't telling you to ask God. He's telling you to ask the divine, the universe, of course, the edited version of the Bible omits the two lines that would give you this context and teach you how to ask the universe what you need. The secret is in the original Aramaic. All things that you ask straightly, directly from inside my name, you will be given it. So far, you have not done this. If you ask with your voice, if you plead, you will not receive what you desire. 
Again, this lacks full context because it sounds like an instruction to invoke the name of God. These are the two sentences that have been omitted in the Bible today. Ask without hidden motive and be surrounded by your answer. Be enveloped by what you desire, that your gladness be full. It's not asking you to speak. Only trust that you are already surrounded by the answer. You must already be of the notion that what you need is around you at all times. When it says you must ask without a hidden motive, it is asking you to cast judgments aside. This is what Buddhists ask too, that we ask without judgment of right or wrong, or have convictions about how it will happen. It's simple. When doctors operate on a cancerous tumor, they don't judge cancer as good or bad, merely a possibility. In the quantum world, all things are possible, and judging things does not undo them or give you control over them. When you can find it in yourself to reject judgment, embrace new possibilities, and align your thoughts and emotions to one idea, you will have started speaking the language of the universe. If you like this video, subscribe to the Be Inspired channel for more educational and motivational content. Thanks for watching.